Welcome to Blue Coat's computer-based training. This training module is designed to give you a basic understanding of authentication credentials as used in performing authentication within the Proxy SG, and assumes that you have completed the Authentication Overview and Authentication Realms modules, and have some understanding of the Blue Coat Proxy SG. This training module is based on SGOS version 6.5.2. Examples in this module assume the use of an IWA direct authentication realm in explicit proxy mode. Let's look at the learning objectives for this module. When you have finished this module, you will be able to understand at a high level the role of credentials in proxy SG authentication, describe the three credential types used in proxy SG authentication, and compare the security and performance aspects of each credential type. Credential types. In a proxy SG deployment, when a client makes a request, the proxy SG responds by offering the client the available options for the credential type to be used. The client then chooses the credential type. The proxy SG offers three types of credentials for use with an IWA authentication realm. BASIC, NTLM, and Kerberos. BASIC authentication is the simplest technique for enforcing access controls to web resources because it does not require cookies, session identifier, or login pages. BASIC authentication is merely encoded with BASE64 in transit, but not encrypted or hashed in any way. BASIC authentication is, therefore, typically used over HTTPS. Unlike Kerberos, BASIC and NTLM must go to a domain controller to validate group membership. Kerberos is also more scalable than NTLM. BASIC is very scalable as well because the proxy SG can cache BASIC credentials, but for security reasons, the majority of proxy SG users no longer accept BASIC credentials. NTLM Authentication NTLM is a password authentication protocol. IWA will prompt the user if no password was used at login. If the current user is a domain user who logged in with a password, the browser won't prompt for a password, assuming the realm was properly configured. Windows caches a hash of the user password entered on initial login. The password does not cross the wire. A different hash is sent every time. Before SGOS 6.5.2, only one S-channel request could be processed at a time. SGOS 6.5.2 enables multiple concurrent connections to Active Directory for the validation of NTLM credentials, eliminating this possible bottleneck. NTLM authentication over HTTP. The process begins when a client makes a request to the proxy SG which for the purposes of this example is operating in explicit proxy mode. The proxy SG replies with a 407 HTTP response code, which prompts the client to resend the request, this time including the authentication credentials. The client resends the original request. This time the client includes the type 1 message encoded in base 64. The proxy SG responds to the client with the type 2 message. The client receives the type 2 message, which contains the challenge, and calculates, using the user's password, the type 3 message for that challenge. The client sends the type 3 message to the proxy SG as a base64 encoded string. The proxy SG uses the Windows Net Logon service to pass the information to the domain controller for the final validation. If the type 3 message contains the correct response to the challenge, the domain controller authenticates the user. At this point, the proxy SG passes the original request to the origin content server, and the user starts receiving the requested data. Kerberos authentication. Prior to accessing the proxy SG appliance, the client logs into the local domain and obtains a ticket granting ticket from the key distribution center. Kerberos Authentication, IWA Direct. When the user attempts to access a URL that requires authentication, the proxy SG sends a challenge asking for Kerberos credentials. 
The client workstation obtains a service ticket from the KDC. The service ticket is presented to the proxy SG. The proxy SG appliance validates the service ticket without consulting a domain controller. Comparing NTLM and Kerberos. Security. Kerberos is the most secure protocol because it establishes mutual authentication between the client and the server using an encrypted shared key. Performance. Kerberos performance is typically much better than NTLM because it requires only one round trip and is more scalable, whereas the NTLM challenge response authentication requires two round trips between the browser and the authentication server to validate the user's password and retrieve a Windows access token that contains the user's group memberships. Configuration. Kerberos does require additional configuration, and the client will silently downgrade to NTLM if Kerberos is not set up properly or if the client cannot do Kerberos. In summary, Kerberos is the recommended authentication protocol for IWA because it is more secure than NTLM, it puts the least load on your network, and is more scalable. Unfortunately, it's not widely or well understood, and therefore tends to be underused. To ensure that IWA uses the Kerberos protocol rather than downgrading to NTLM, you just need to make sure that authentication requests are directed to the Kerberos service principal name associated with the proxy SG. The way you do this depends on how your IWA realm is connecting to the Active Directory. Thank you for watching. This concludes the Blue Coat computer based training on authentication credentials. For more information on Proxy SG authentication related topics, visit the following Blue Coat resources. Knowledge Base and Authentication Web Guide available at bto.bluecoat.com and the Customer Forums available at forums.bluecoat.com. Email any questions or comments regarding this training module to training.books at bluecoat.com.